What's up YouTube? I'm Michael and behind the camera is Ellie. We are the bill paying hobbyists. I had a coworker ask for a pen. So this week I'm turning this ethically sourced buffalo horn and pairing it with a gunmetal chrome cogent pen kit. This is the first time using this kit we found on woodcraft.com. He wants something sleek, simple, and black. This should fit the bill. I do want to add that no buffaloes were harmed in the making of this video. We need to get the buffalo horn blank cut into two pieces, so we're headed to the bandsaw. Let's get to it. Here we are at the bandsaw. We're out in the garage. It's a little bit colder out here. I don't want to take the bandsaw in the house because it causes a lot of dust and, you know, I don't need that in there. It's bad enough with the lathe and the drill press. We're going to cut this down. We're going to use this jig for the tubes on the cogent pen. So this is the sled my dad made. Nice little jig. You take your tube, whatever you want to cut, whatever length you want. Take the gauge, put it there, and then you put your blank here. It will cut the blank the same size as that tube, or in this case, with that fine, tune, fine tuning adjustment knob out the way that it is, it's gonna make my blank a little bit longer than the tube, which is what I want in case I have blowout when I drill a hole to put the tube in. So I'm gonna do this one first, and then this one a little bit shorter than that one. Hold them all tight together, and make sure you wear safety glasses. Always, always protect your eyes. And see, now my blanks are a little bit longer than my tubes, which is perfect. Now we head over to the drill press and we get these holes drilled. Here we are at the drill press. We're getting ready to drill the buffalo horn. Now this pen kit calls for a 12 and a half millimeter and a 10 and a half millimeter drill bit. These are very big. So we have to take our time and be very careful because these will grab, especially the 12 and a half millimeter. It's so big it will grab your blank. The other problem is, not really a problem, the other challenge is that these blanks are already round. So finding the center is a little bit more difficult. Let me bring you in closer and show you how we do it. Normally with a square blank, you can just connect the corners and where those lines meet is the center of your blank. I don't have any corners. So you kind of have to eyeball it. And the best way to do that, I found, there's other ways to do it. They make gauges that'll do even round ones is kind of eyeball where you look like you have the widest section and just keep going around until you find an area to where the lines all intersect and make one point. That's gonna be pretty close to center. To me, it actually looks like it needs to come down just a little bit, like right in there. Let me do this one and then we'll make a little indention and that will help with our drill bit. Pretty darn center. So I'm just gonna take this and put my all right there. It looks pretty close to center. Give it a little tap. That's gonna help the point of my drill bit find close to center as this blank is. So that when I drill, it stays generally in the right spot. This one, I wanna say center is more, I mean, it gives me a general idea. I'm gonna say center is pretty close to right there. The next thing I want to do is make sure that my pen blank vise holds it very tightly. I don't want to get it too tight to where it's kind of compressing it and then when it drills it catches but I want it tight enough that this doesn't turn while I'm drilling it. Really good with the corners here. It's generally good with these as well. That's a little bit too tight. Let's loosen it up a little bit. There we go. That should hold it very well while I'm drilling. Now the longer tube which we know it's not that one because that tube's longer than the blank. The longer tube is the smaller diameter tube. So this one will be the 10 and a half millimeters. So let's get that one drilled first. Now I'm gonna get my drill bit set. I wanna make sure it turns straight. I wanna make sure it goes all the way down. It goes down inside my divot there, my recess, so I know that it goes down far enough and I know that this is going to clear. So now I'm ready to drill. I'm going to do this one, like I said, first, and then we'll do the 12 and a half. I'm going to take my time and go slow because I don't want it to catch and I don't want it to blow out. And always wear safety glasses.
That's what you gotta be careful of. Those brad points catch like that. Hopefully we didn't get a blowout. And it cracked. So it caught, and this one is no good. So I'm gonna have to go cut another one. Terrible, terrible. Got too hot. It happens, but we're still gonna drive forward and we're gonna do this 12 millimeter. 12 and a half millimeter to be precise. And I'm gonna take my sweet time with this one. There we go. Now, you'll notice it's a little off center. That's okay, because I'm not gonna have that much meat left over when I start turning this. There we go. Got both of them drilled finally. And we can take them over and get them glued up, epoxied up. All right, here we are. We're getting ready to glue up the tubes for the cogent kit into the buffalo horn. Pretty quick and simple. These tubes are smooth, so the first thing you need to do is make sure you rough them up. I use 120 grit sandpaper. You want something for your epoxy or your glue or your CA, whatever you're using to grab onto, and this just helps it do that. So you just rough it up. Some people use 80, some people use, I've seen people use 60. So it just depends on what you want to use. Sometimes the tubes come pre-sanded and roughed up. Just don't do it too much because the brass tubes aren't that um, thick and you don't want to sand all the way through them. And you don't want to squeeze when you're doing it either. You don't want to make them out of round. That makes for a very hard time for glue to adhere to and for your bushings and your pin kit to go together. All right, that's done. Now, what I like to use is JB Weld 5-Minute Epoxy. Use two parts, mix it up for 30 seconds, put it on there. We're good to go. Let that sit for 24 hours. We'll come back tomorrow and get these things turned. All right, we're at the lathe and we have our two buffalo horn blanks that are already prepped. I got the pen mill already did the ends to make them square. We have our bushings and the kit. So first thing we need to do is get this on the lathe and get it turned. Bring it closer, I'll show you what we do there. Here we are at the lathe, got the mandrel on here with the shaft and I need my mandrel saver. That goes there, that helps me keep, when I'm pushing it doesn't bend my shaft, it keeps it straight because you don't want that. This is uh what do you call that live so it spins on its own and this one spins at the behest of the head stock which is the motor where the motor's at and here are our bushings we've got two different size bushings these are made a little bit different these are all from woodcraft the bigger bushings go with the cap so they go in here and this one goes here all right and on my mandrel i have a spacer and another bushing. I'm not gonna need that. I'm pretty far away right there, that's good enough. And then we have the smaller set that goes on the body of the pen. So one goes on this side. Those are tight, Woodcraft. Man, it's all right. They definitely won't slide around, which is good. And then this one goes here. Good, and I'll put one spacer here. I'm gonna use that one. Get this out of the way. And then I slide my tailstock over. I tighten down the handle. And then I turn the spindle, give it a nice, make it nice and snug. Tighten that down. Get my tool rest close. Make sure it's parallel with my spindle. And I believe, I need to raise this up. We still haven't tightened that up yet. I want my tool to rest midway through. Good thing about this one is it's already round, so I don't have to worry about any chips coming off. I do need to take my time because this stuff is very soft. As you saw when I was drilling the first blank here and it cracked and I see little lines here, so I'm gonna take my time and hopefully we don't have a blowout. If we do, we're gonna have to come up with something different for this pen. 
here we go. Safety glasses and the vacuum. I'm gonna turn it about 2600 RPM. Wow, I gotta tell you this. It's snowing. As you can see, we got close enough to the bushings. So now we're gonna get this out of the way and we're gonna do our sanding. But I'm not gonna sand with these bushings. I'm gonna use some neoprene bushings so I can save these bushings for as long as possible. So it goes there. I'm gonna put this one here. I'm gonna use that so I can have it as a gauge in case I need it to make sure that I don't sand too much. For sanding, some 180 grit, some 320 grit, and then I also have these foam sanding pads. This one is 600 and this one is 2000. So I'm gonna use those and after I sand, with the lathe on this way to smooth it out, then I will turn it off and I will go by hand like this to go the length of the blank because I wanna get, see these hash lines? I wanna get those lines out. If you don't get those out when you polish, it's they're gonna show up and it's gonna look terrible. Also, as you're watching, you're gonna see dark spots, light spots when I start sanding like this. The dark spots mean that it there's a dip in the blank right there and I need to get it all light spots so it's all sanding and it'll be as flat as possible. So vacuum back on, slide this over, tighten it up and I turn my lathe down all the way to slow and then I do this as I'm tightening up to help center those bushings in the tube. Ooh. Alright, I just want to make sure I don't break nothing. And then I lock this down and I'm going to sand at about 1200 RPM. I'm just gonna take a paper towel 
and some denatured alcohol, denatured alcohol, and clean it. So now, I'm gonna turn my lathe on at about 600. I put a piece of cardboard down here to protect my lathe because I'm gonna put a quick coat of thin set or micro, ah, mercury flex thin flex. Mercury adhesives, thin flex, CA glue over this real quick. I'm gonna do it really fast and I'm just gonna let it sit. That'll seal everything in and hopefully we won't get any white specks or any issues and it will look beautiful. Here we go. And I'm just gonna let it sit. I'm not gonna put any accelerator on it. I'm just gonna let it sit and dry. And hopefully it'll dry clean. Please dry clean. That is our goal. Nice, clean, dry. You see how that shines? That's what the pen's supposed to look like when I'm done. Or not even near done. At least an hour. At least an hour left, depending on how that dries. All right, here we go. It's that time to dry. Let's see what we got. Oh, excellent. All right, so let's get this cleaned up and then we can properly apply CA glue and polish. Ah, it did it. That's what you don't want, that right there. So now I gotta sand that all off. So here we go, back to sanding. Okay, what's the worst that can happen? Wait. You gotta get it dry. This time instead, I'm gonna go with medium first. Let's see what that does. Hey, I could be doing it wrong. My thin glue may be bad. Which sucks, so that's a big bottle. And it's almost brand new. <gasps> What's that? Okay, it took many, many, many tries at getting this thing done i was able to finally get the cap shined so i still need to do the bottom i've got the ca glue on there and it has not turned white now i need to smooth it out and get it polished i'm gonna bring you in closer and show you the differences and then we're going to attempt to do this one hopefully it will hold we'll see what happens all right so i was able to finally get this all shined up and this is the body that needs to be shined up. So we're gonna attempt to make this one like this one. That took a lot of work. Let's see what we can do. For smoothing this out, I'm normally I go with Abernet, and when I do my Abernet, I go all the way from the 180, 220, 240, 320, 400. I'm only gonna do 320 and 400 because I don't want to sand through my finish like I've done like I did so many times on the other one. I'm gonna turn this back up to 12. Let's see what we can do. Again, the key here is to make the finish smooth. I'm not trying to take it off. I'm not trying to polish it yet. I'm just trying to make it smooth. See, once you say you got all those little ridges in there so let's take our time let's see what we can do without finishing or without sanding the finish off nope it's sanded through you can see so i have a little bit here and that's the blank actually right there all right if you look right here see where it's real dull right there and it kind of it's has no definition to it just Actually, it almost looks like an arrow. 
and then the shiny part, it's already sanded through. The CA glue's already off. So my determination is my CA glue's bad. So we're gonna have to do what we did to the other one. I gotta sand all this off first. I happen to have this extra thick CA glue from Hobby Town. It works on this blank. Let me rephrase. It worked on the cap blank. Let's see how it does on this blank. No accelerator. I'm gonna let it dry 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes in between each one. You know what, I'm gonna go with 15 minutes on this one. 15 minutes in between each one. All right, so here we are, it's 20.38 at night, 20.39 of day four on this particular pen. This is the fifth time I've applied CA glue to this blank. So if it's dry, we're going to sand it and hope we do not sand through the finish. Okay, it is dry. So, excellent. We're gonna use 320 and 400 Abernet. 320 and 400 to smooth it out, very light, and then hopefully polish it. So here we go. All right, it's 11.24 the next day. We're gonna try something new and put that Coat of CA finish on there. I'm just gonna wet sand. I got a bottle, a new bottle of Mercury Flex Thin, and I just put eight coats on here. And we are going to now attempt to smooth it out. And again, I'm only gonna use 320 and 400 Abernet, very light. And see how well we do. This time, fresh bottle of CA glue. All right, so far so good. Now we are gonna wet sand. Where's the step that usually is not so far so good? The one I just finished. Oh. Here we go again, number one. Quick check. Oh, thank goodness. 40 second time to chore. 40 second time. All right, so up until now I've been polishing at 1400. I'm gonna move it up to 1500 for the last two. Just being cautious with the first four to make sure I didn't sand through or wet sand through the finish. So now we're gonna get a shiny shiny. All right, so that last one is one micron, which is about 14,000 grit. Now, I'm gonna hit it with this 
which is 100,000 grit. Diamond polishing compound. Bam. And just like that. Just like that. Eighth time <laughs> done. However many days. <laughs> Four days. YouTube magic is gonna be just like that. YouTube magic just like that. This kit's a little intricate, so we're gonna go over to the workbench and put this together. All right, so here's the kit. The cogent rollerball in chrome. No, gunmetal. I was gonna say it better not be chrome, it's gunmetal. We have our safety ceramic rollerball, our cap insert. This is one of the couplers with some beauty rings. The end, this is the end, the end cap. This is the cap coupler. Here's the clip for the cap. This is another coupler, goes on that end with some beauty rings and the tip. First, let's look at the blanks. Now you can see that this end of the cap is a little bigger than that end. So that's the top. And then on your body, this end's smaller than that end. So this is the writing end. So it goes that way, like that, all right? And the clip goes on here. And that. And this goes inside, and this goes with it. They press together like this. When you press it together, it all presses together. All right. Then on this end, this threads into here. Okay, but it goes in there. And we have rings, we want to match that pattern. So this goes here, like that, like that. All right, that presses into there. This screws into here. Starting to make sense? Then on the tail end, this presses in this way. That goes on there. That goes on there. This presses into here and then threads in here. And there's a spring, and I left the spring in the bag. Don't ever want to lose the spring. So don't the first, lose the spring. don't lose the spring. The first thing I want to do, it says you can press this all together. I don't like doing that because I don't want to mess up the threads. So I'm going to press these two together. Now I'm going to press this end into here. Then I'm gonna press this end in. We want the cap to kind of line up with this. So it's gonna be with those grains right there. So we're going right, right about there. We have the last bit, which is the clip. And I don't want to cover up the grain, so we're going to put it on the back end, right there. The cool part about this pen is you can change the ink from any end. We can screw that in, we can put the ink cartridge in, then the spring, and the end cap. I don't ever want to lose the spring. Don't lose the spring. 
So I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to put the spring in. Screw that on there. Drop the ink in. Pull the cap off. Screw the tip in. And we are now good to go. Here's the cool part. The cap screws on the end. So you don't ever lose a cap. Don't lose the cap. Peanut gallery in the back. Done. Are <laughs> you good? I'm just watching the shop dogs go around, make sure they don't knock over the camera or anything. I don't mind if they hit it. I just don't want to knock it down. Anyway, this, this pen turned out amazing, finally, in the end. A um, couple things you might want to keep in mind if you ever want to turn buffalo horn, make sure it's dry. Make sure your area is dry and make sure your CA glue is new or at least new-ish. Mine was bad and I didn't realize it because it worked on other pens, but this one, it did not want to take on here. Uh, as you can see from the video, I tried, what, five, six different coats yes. to get it down there. But the results of not giving up and keep, keep, keep trying. Perseverance. Perseverance, there you go, is it turned out, it, it really did. It's beautiful. You can see that. So I think he's gonna love it. It's gonna look great on his desk. It's a nice, good weighty pen. I love this kit. I think we need to buy more of these kits. I love this cogent pit from it turned out beautiful. cogent kit from Woodcraft. So very nice. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something because I know I did. I learned a lot on this one. Yeah. So just yeah. So when are you gonna make me a whole set for my table out of buffalo horn? A whole set of what? <laughs> all the, all of it. The pin mill, the salt, the, the scoops, all of it out of buffalo horn. Out of buffalo horn? Buffalo horn. Thanks for watching. <laughs> hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new because I know I did. And yeah, this was a lot of fun. If you're getting value from our videos, please subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. Share daily if you can. We really do appreciate it. Please go do something nice for a veteran today. We love you. See you next week.